Podcasting worldwide from a studio inside global headquarters of RP Enterprises in Kansas City. Hey, gang. Ladies and gentlemen, Papa's home. This is the Papa Ron Podcast. File transfer in progress. With Ronnie Phillips and Jillian Gray. Showtime. All right, we're back. Episode 47 of the Papa Ron Podcast. Before we get started with today's guest, who I'm really excited about because of all the hype that is going around social media, We'll get to that in just a moment. Remember that you need to get yourself one of these bags of gratitude and empathy. This helps support the Papa Ron podcast. We partnered with our friends over at Dirty Duck Coffee, uh, DirtyDuckCoffee.com. They've got a lot of amazing blends of coffee, but this one is specific to the Papa Ron podcast, and it's a smooth Brazilian medium roast. And if you're going to start your day with coffee, might as well start your day with the right mindset. Do it with gratitude and empathy. Use promo code PAPA, that's P-A-P-A, for any of the things that they offer over at dirtyduckcoffee.com, and that way you will save. Galena. What's up? We're here. <laughs> We've here been we talking are. about doing this for, I don't know, since Stephen, I guess, was well, on, right? Almost a month. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so can I start off by first asking, how do you pronounce your last name? It's Saltkovska. It's actually a lot easier than meets the eye. First four words is salt, mm-hmm. just like salt and pepper. And then K-O-V-S-K is Saltkovska. Saltkovska. Like I'm going to screw that up. Saltkovska. <laughs> Perfect. Did I say it? So call, Saltkovska. No. No. It's not W. It's V. Saltkov. That's what I thought I said. But Saltkovska. <laughs> nope. Saltkovska. Saltvoska. Saltvoska. No. Saltkovska. No, no. No. Salt yes. Kovska. Saltkovska. Saltkovska. That's it. Saltkovska. Swarovski. No. No. Saltkovska. No. That's it. Saltkovska. You're killing it. Yeah. Okay, that's good. pretty good. Right? I'll take it. You are so much better, but we, I know, well, aren't, aren't the ladies always, you know, I agree. <laughs> We're already three minutes or two minutes into this thing and I'm already exhausted. All right. Um, Galena, there's a lot of conversation about you going around on social media. Hmm. How you, let, let's start with that. Let's start with, well, first of all, and I want to get into the fact that you're from Russia and you've got a really fascinating life. I mean, yes. from the way you were brought up and we're, I want to get into that, but let's tease the McBee dynasty a little bit because that's obviously what brought us together. How are you feeling? How, how much has your life changed since this show went live five weeks ago? It's actually changed quite a bit. I am getting enormous support and just, you know, outreach of a lot of females, which mm. I'm so grateful for, mm-hmm. um, and just the general interest in my story and everything that I do, everything is extremely positive. So that that is incredibly encouraging and yeah. gives me so many ideas of what I can do to um, to do in the future for the girls, you know, mm-hmm. somebody who is coming from my kind of backgrounds that there is so much more to life, you know, for us, for girls, you mm-hmm. know, that coming from maybe not most favorable situations in life. So mm. yeah, there is like my bra- brain is literally exploding from ideas. Yeah. Um, Were you surprised by that? Were you surprised? Like, because when we talked to Steven yeah. <laughs> And after filming, when like, you know, he was talking about watching things back or just knowing how things went, you know, like once the filming's done and you know how a certain situation went and maybe thinking, oh, I wonder how people are going to, especially whether it's women or men, you know, I wonder how they're going to take that or if they're, what they're going to think of me. So were you surprised by how much positive feedback you got? Honestly, I did not even know what to expect. I'm such a like risk taker and Mm -hmm. like... I, I just go for it. Like mm. if, if life presents me an opportunity, I go for it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. then I just deal with the, um, you know, outcomes of it. So no, I am like incredibly pleasantly surprised. So, yeah. you know, most of the filming was such a blur, <laughs> like, you know, between working and filming and doing everything that we do. Like, I, I don't even remember half of it, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. So when the show show aired out, like, I was obviously extremely anxious. I, mm-hmm. I did not know what, what was going to be presented to everybody. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm my like, life's out there. Another, Here we go. Here's another, you know, like, yeah. the way I, I, I looked at it, it's just another adventure. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just going to make the best out of it. Mm-hmm. And I am just so humbled and so pleased with such a positive feedback uh, for myself and you know especially like women outreach it's like it's unbelievable I am 
so happy about all of that. So good. (laughs) So good. So with the good, and I was really excited and happy to hear that you've heard so or seen so much positivity Mm -hmm. that's been supportive of you. With that, there has been some bad. I mean, we would be naive to saying that there has, right? So you see some of that, right? Of course. And I'm guessing this is the first time you've ever been kind of thrust into a spotlight to this magnitude, right? That is correct. Okay. So some people respond differently to that negativity. Maybe kind of give us some insight on how that felt when you started seeing some of the hate. To be honest with you, I, I don't focus on hate. Uh, I focus more on the positive feedbacks. Good. Yeah, I do read the hate because I want to have a full awareness of yeah. myself. Yeah. And there is always a valid point in in hate because... Um, and it's not always hate. Maybe it's, it's just negativity. It's, it's, neg- just- it's not even... I don't feel it's just a negativity. I don't... Some of the people that maybe give a negative or what perceives as a negative feedback, I don't know their life experiences. Mm-hmm. So the way they they see me could be based on, you know, the, it's their perception, you know, mm-hmm. and their sure. perception is their reality. So yeah. I don't know their background and they don't really know my entire journey right. or everything that I experienced in life to put me in the place I am today. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I am... I'm grateful for both. I'm I'm very humbled by all the positive feedback, but I always read all the negative feedbacks as well because yeah. it, it gives me an awareness of everybody who is out there and their journeys. And the reason that they have those negative feedbacks, it could be just the reason, you know, the, the way their life happened and why they perceive me that way. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to judge them for that. Sure. I'm just going to take it as is. Okay, so... Would you say then that your upbringing, which we're going to get into next, which was a very hard upbringing. I mean, the way you and I discussed on the (laughs) the phone, (laughs) I'm sorry. It was quite different. Yeah. Right. So do you think that that is that upbringing has helped you maybe be stronger towards not feeling sensitive to the negative feedback? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, and, and maybe this is what sometimes, um, creates like a a, a level of separations between me and a lot of people because I just zone out some of the negativities and I just Mm -hmm. keep on keeping on positive, you know, positive things or moving forward or whatever that is. So people perceive it as I'm not empathetic enough Mm. versus I am, I am very empathetic, but I'm just, this is my way of empathy is like, I'm not going to dwell on something that life is too short. I'm not going to dwell on negative experiences. I'm not going to waste my time on feeling sorry for myself. I'm going to spend my time that I have here on creating something positive on dwelling about, you know, on my good experiences mm-hmm. and good memories. Everybody knows that our brain designed to remember bad memories uh, more than good memories, right? We automatically go to all the bad memories. Mm-hmm. It takes enormous discipline and practice to remember all the good memories that sure. happened in life. Usually it's like, you know, I don't know, <laughs> 10 to one ratio. Mm. You will like dwell on this one bad memory, but you will forget 10 to 100 good memories mm. yeah. that happened in <clears throat> relationship, in your childhood or whatever. Sure. So then you will make automatically yourself like a negative person. Mm-hmm. Like, let's let's focus on positive experiences. Yeah. yeah. yeah I sure. like this. Yeah. <laughs> right? Good for you. Okay. So let's, we're going to get into some of the experiences, some of the people yeah. of the McBee dynasty. Um However, I want to, before we get into that, so that's a little teaser. So if you just, you know, are listening to this, hang on, we're going to get into the meat of the show in just a bit, but let's talk about your upbringing. You uh, were born and raised in Russia. Actually, um, I was born and raised in former Soviet Union. Okay. I was born and raised in Kyrgyzstan, which is Central Asia. Okay. Um, Vastly different from Russia. (laughs) Okay. Uh, My mom is from Siberia, so she's from the heart of Russia, you Mm -hmm. know, like, um, but... I was born in Central Asia. That's where I grew up. Okay. And what was that upbringing like? That was extremely different. So there was a mixture of multiple cultures, uh, multiple religions, um, m- multiple like 
um, dynamics in, in, in terms of the um, economics. So, so my dad uh, it was born also in Kyrgyzstan, which, you know, kind of a Muslim um, country. So we had a very different expectations as girls growing up. Oh, okay. So I, I, when we moved out of Kyrgyzstan, I was almost 15 years old. So mm-hmm. my entire childhood was spent in Central Asia. Okay. So <laughs> that you tells moved, you... You moved where when you were 15? So... Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. Mm-hmm. 90, uh, so the entire economy and everything started collapsing. Everything got devalued. And a lot of wars were um, breaking out. Yeah, We sold our house, kind of loaded everything on a freight train, like a freight wagon. Okay. Right? Okay. Whatever we had left over and our yeah. dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> of my course, gosh. Our car, our yeah. dog. Uh, we had literally a bed uh, made out of pallets. Mm. Um, so we headed to Crimean Peninsula. That took two weeks through the entire like Asian region and wow. you know, um, to get to the Black Sea, the, the Crimean Peninsula. By the time we got there, pretty much all the money that we even had in, in hand got devalued. <laughs> right. So we, we're there, you know, like I am almost 15 years old, in a completely new environment. Wow. This is mind-blowing. This is not, like, I am very proud of this experience mm-hmm. because not everybody had that. It's it's humbling. It's, like, mind-blowing. It's it's so much to handle for a young person, you know, mm-hmm. that what was growing up in one cultural and economical and political environment to move into... So, basically, everything that we grew up believing in collapsed hmm. were you, you know, able like, to kind of wrap your head around that at 15 you, no no <laughs> yeah no i mean i can't imagine that you right. would that was and this is like that kind of brings you into like a, a confusion period sure you know nobody um that is 15 year old should experience that type of right. events you have to be either less mature or more mature hmm. this is your like time of i don't know puberty like yeah. when mm-hmm. you are becoming from child to like you got adult, enough going on you're already coming <laughs> in that this teenage <laughs> yes, years no yeah. so sure. you are coming from yeah. uh being a child to an adult and now you're coming into everything that you kind of were preparing for your entire life right. your college whatever your education your career your future in your political environment which is important, you know, political uh, atmosphere is extremely important to mm-hmm. everybody. Right. It's all, you, you, you know, gone. Mm-hmm. So now you are like sitting there as a 15 year old while your parents are super confused because they lived in this uh, environment their entire life. Right. And they're trying to figure out, okay, what's next? And they lost everything that they had their entire life. So you're sitting there <laughs> as a 15-year-old. It's It can be extremely confusing. Yeah. Sure. That's kind of given us a 30,000-foot mm. view, overview. <laughs> yes. What I'm curious, uh, and look, we really try on this. It sounds like you've listened or watched a few of these podcasts. Yes. And so I really... And I try to do it with the utmost respect, but come with some challenging quest- questions to where we right. can get beneath the surface to get information that maybe resonates more with people who are watching or listening. So obviously this is a catastrophic transition in your life at 15. Yes. Is there any particular event that stands out or any kind of particular trauma that stands out with, with that particular transition? This is a, such a great question to be, um, one of the things is even the dress code, you know, um, in Asia, the girls have to dress completely different than when you are moving to Europe. So, Crimean Peninsula is considered more European area sure. versus the Central Asia. The length of the skirt, okay, you know, the way you expose your skin, like all of that comes yeah. to like a real life when you are moving as a teenager to a whole different country. So then you you become like really mixed up. I'm like, okay, like. Uh, so you are walking into a high school dressed as an, you are from an Asian country uh-huh. <laughs> into European country. Okay, so more conservative. You were dressed you, more we conservative. We were so conservative, yeah. so much more conservative. Yeah. Uh, our behaviors in terms of the um, 
relationship with boys mm -hmm. you know everything was extremely conservative mm -hmm. we were not allowed to do like you know touch go to dance like yeah none of that was existing in where i'm from to where i moved to right so that was like extremely confusing so you you're trying to do different things so you you know like it's uh <laughs> well definitely was like a very memorable experience in my life i would think that would be hard too not just you're a teenager you're ch like it's it would be challenging for a teenager to move to a different high school <laughs> yes. like like in the united states one state to the next know, but it's not I... even going to be right because being no. 15 that's hard but i can't imagine and then you're probably trying to be respectful to how you were brought up because of either a religion or just even your parents it could have just been your there parents is, um so in former soviet union it was an atheist country so we oh, okay. didn't really have a religion which actually s did survive through the entire um, duration of the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. but that was not, I guess the uh, the idea was a religion based, mm -hmm. but it was just how, like, this is right. how I knew it. Right. Well, just the principles, the rules. Principles, the, the rules. Yeah, the principles yeah, that's and the how, rules what of, was like, this is how you of dress, us. this is how you act, right. this is how you respect. This is exactly right. Yeah. Mm. So then is it fair to say that it was just more confusing than traumatic? It was confusing, traumatic. It was like a combination. Give me an of example things. of something that was traumatizing. Just the way um, the women were treated. Like it's. Um, it so were you kind of treated like a different. slave? Or like you were just there it to serve like, men? It's like not, not necessarily servant. We were just, um, we were expected to be extremely compliant. Gotcha. Um, compliant. And it was a lot more humble to, when it comes to our relationship. So <laughs> um, then compared to other countries where, you know, it's a lot more freedom um, yeah. to where you can, <clears throat> the way you can talk to a guy, mm -hmm. to a man mm -hmm. uh, compared to what we were allowed to or you know was permitted to mm -hmm. okay and it may be different like and i i don't want to speak for everybody you know soviet union was quite a different country it, and um because it was such a diverse country and it included so many republics that mm -hmm. coming from different demographics it, you also have to take in consideration your parents you know how they were brought up mm -hmm. uh so you know my dad was extremely high strong so he you know grew up in more of an asian environment so he had a particular expectation of girls mm. and you know he could have been you know a lot more tougher on me than maybe other girls but i did not know that you know sure that's that's my that was outlook. your reality this is that was my reality yeah. growing up in kyrgyzstan that the girls were supposed to behave that way the, yeah. the girls were supposed to dress that way it could have been coming from my father <laughs> yeah. i don't know you yeah. know other fathers may be different so. so did you have a good relationship with your father it was um nothing that you guys Again, you, you can know, speak in freely. Asia, yeah. it's it's different. Sure. So it's very formal. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a very, as a female, you cannot have a, a close, warm relationship with the father. Oh. Okay. So it's more of an official thing. It's, He's you know, an authority. Like, it's an authority, and we have to have a boy in a family, which, you know, my brother, <laughs> I love him to death. Good. So, um, but for me, you know, my dad had a very clear boundaries. It was never like, hey, how was your high school? You know, like yeah. sure. nothing that you guys are experiencing yeah. here mm -hmm. was not, never was a part of my life. Right. Father is my father. He is going to work. He comes in and check in on us. He, you know, provides for us. But we did not have any kind of like conversational friendships or, you know, he'll bring me a gift or he'll provide. So he had food. a role basically to provide and protect and Correct. there was no love. He loved me, but there was no not affection. Like, I'm not right. saying with affection. Right. That's it. That's the warmth it. Yes. And affection, yeah. Whatever you guys are like, I, I, I don't want. To, I, like I you apologize. didn't sit on your dad's lap, or, no. or he didn't read a book to you at night, <laughs> no. or okay, okay, <laughs> right. Which is no. which? Like you laugh at how comical <laughs> that is, but like I can't imagine that. No, right? I, mean, I can't. You can't imagine. <laughs> you probably can't imagine your dad. No, my God. saying come over here and and sit. And, yeah, let's and, bond. Like, no. So right. then at the age of 15, when you make this transition yeah. and you're walking into basically a new world That's of behavior, it. and you're probably, uh, is it fair to say then you're seeing more of that kind of behavior where men are having, or let's say um, uh, fathers are having relationships with the females in the, in this, during this transition? Was there more of that? 
Not necessarily. Really? Mm-mm. Okay. Not necessarily. And it's probably because I wasn't even focusing on evaluating that particular um, part of my life. Well, you know, I was so busy trying to figure out what's going on and fit in mm-hmm. that I wasn't even worrying about. I was just trying to be I'm like, okay, I'm in this whole environment. I'm like such a nerd, you know, <laughs> I, I love my math. I like, uh, you know, I'm straight A student, but now I want to fit in. Right. So you how- know, I, my clothes is freaking ugly. Like uh, <laughs> my skirts are way too long. Right. So now I'm trying to fit in. But you also didn't have a lot of money when you first got no, there, right? None. So what do you do? Do you just, did you cut your skirts? Did you, was that makeup a thing? The, was your hair Well, a thing? I definitely all- did not wear makeup. Okay, I, no I don't makeup. think I ever, wa- like... <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you have no no no, idea. no no. Okay. Okay. But no, I I mean just um you you're trying to fit in and you're yeah. trying to figure out things and you know you're trying to make the right friends yeah it was like super awkward moments i'm like yeah. sometimes i'm looking at my pictures i'm like can i please just burn them <laughs> wow <laughs> like, what i was thinking <laughs> right, right but right. You, you're just trying to fit in just yeah. like any other teenager sure. and any part of the world yeah regardless of the culture regardless mm-hmm. of everything that's happening in their life you're yeah. trying to fit in yeah. in whatever element you are in in the moment yeah sure so so what was that element for you like for example jillian's <laughs> daughter is a great wrestler and so that's her thing she plays to her strengths and her assets what were those things that you really leaned on that you found gave you gratification because you were good into it and you by pouring into that you surrounded yourself with others to be honest with you, my, my grades and my schoolwork, my schoolwork, yeah. okay. uh, that what gave me uh, the most friendships. Um, it's just because I was able to, I, I was always a straight A student. Um, that gave me always that, I guess at the moment, maybe that's what I felt mm-hmm. a, a way of uh, like a circle of friendship because mm-hmm. I was so good at school that somebody who was cool would still come to me for any of their schoolwork or their grades and stuff like that. And that was kind of my getaway because I was able to not only like take care of my schoolwork, but I was able to take care of everybody's schoolwork (laughs) (laughs) or tests or whatever there is. And and that's what, you know, but after, you know, once they... The thing is that that was just an entryway. Uh, Once they got, got to know me, we just became friends, so I yeah. am still friends with with the girl that was the coolest girl in in the high school, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she she lives in Moscow, and mm. you know, initially when I came in, you know, she was probably not the the biggest fan of me, right? <laughs> you know, she like okay. I was the nerd, and she was yeah. the coolest girl, yeah. But we are still friends to this day, like. Oh, wow. uh, and she's still, still over there. She, yes, she's okay. in Moscow. Yeah. And I have a couple of her friends that I still have a full connection with, mm-hmm. including the uh, the girl from Kyrgyzstan um, that we went to elementary school with. Oh, wow. And we still keep in touch. That's oh, incredible. that's so cool. Social media is probably Social up media to, is yeah. the best. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you were talking about, okay, where you were from and then where you went. And I was, yes. well, while you've been talking, I've been trying to find yeah. find on a map. So I found... I can, I can show you like the map. Like I can draw so you said the black sea finger. right <laughs> yes black sea crimean peninsula so is that here is that under the ukraine this is it right yeah from to right here. okay you see this yeah peninsula? yeah yeah i'm right here okay okay i just need, i just need a visual of like you said yes. it took two weeks to get there and so i'm like okay you went from here <laughs> to here that's it hmm. yeah i'm i i'm also a geography. <laughs> oh, you are. I know. Like, they, <laughs> I, I can draw I you a map of I like wish. Central Asia, like which yeah. country borders what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I know that it takes an effort. So every like once a month, I will like break out a map. I'm like, okay, I need to refresh her. It's mm. like a language, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're uh, bilingual, it it takes constant practice. Yeah. To know to actually know the languages because yeah. you you forget yeah mm-hmm. and when did you start learning english so obviously we took just like you, you yeah. uh in us you take spanish in, yes. in school you yeah. take it i don't know once a week whatever yeah. so i i knew some basics of english okay before i moved to us oh. when i moved to us i i did realize i did not know english <laughs> 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 like all the cool pretty, cuss words oh, like, yeah. when they, like when the when the people would talk to me i'm like stare at them i'm like 
Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Well, you, like, you, what? you, you do pretty well. I think you, that's what I'm asking because you do pretty well. And I'm also, I always am fascinated with the thought of like my son right now has a friend who's a foreign exchange student yeah. from Spain. Okay. So I don't, I don't remember. I think he started working on learning English a year before he came. Okay. And he's only, he's only 15. So that's just fascinating to me. Like, because I, I only took Spanish for a year in high school. I didn't love it. I wasn't great at it. I didn't really care to do any more. But I've heard English is really hard to learn as a second language. I um, The hard thing about, I did hear that quite a mm -hmm. bit. The hard thing about English is the way, like sometimes there is words that are so close to each other, like snickers yes. and snickers yes like, yeah why can't you just create two different words for it <laughs> yeah yeah like they are so close into yeah. like phonetic pronunciation yes. so when you're a, of a foreign upbringing you may not be able to pronounce it mm -hmm. also um because i'm such a like straight a student a perfectionist mm -hmm. i was like like okay like why I lived here so long. Like, why do I still have an accent? Like, mm -hmm. it frustrates mm -hmm. me so much. So I, I did do my research on that. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently, after puberty, there is a certain things in your mouth that are hardened. So if you move to another country after puberty, huh. you're pretty much going to retain a oh, form really? of accent for the rest of your life. I have wondered yeah. that before. <laughs> yes. About what, you know, like if, if people have to work to keep an accent no you i'm like i want to you not have, have to an accent to not. You, right you have to like have a, a some kind of coach or something like that to fix mm. that but like my my cousins they moved here in high school so they have no accent like oh. you would not even know that they're russians but i moved here when i was 22 okay um and that's when i learned like american english yeah and i'm telling huh. you it was right in the like I'm grateful for internet, but it was before all those translators yes. and stuff. So I, I remember having my paper dictionary. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to <laughs> submerge myself into the whole American culture. Yes. I'm going to watch whatever. Cause I don't know. Um, we, we only got MTV mm -hmm. like in 1990 mm -hmm. and it was like on the VHS and I was like obsessed with it. There was no, like, there was no cable TV. There was yeah. no videos. There was yeah. nothing of that. Yeah. My first movie that I watched on VHS was Commando. Forever Steel. <laughs> <laughs> Obsessed with Arnold. Well, Never it's funny. I was actually just this. thinking of Arnold Schwarzenegger because you think of a guy who's kept an accent <laughs> yeah. for... And so thick. Like, yeah. Sometimes you're like, what His accent is thick and I never even realized it yeah. until... He's like, doing a commercial for State Farm right now yes. making fun of his accent. Yes, yes, yes. I love Correct. it. Yes. But this is what's like, I cannot tell you how many times I watched that movie. And it was, that movie was done with like this Russian, like illegal, you know, over, I mean. <laughs> yes. It so, was so much fun. So when you came here, like when you moved here or you were preparing to move here. Yeah. Um, did you watch any television shows to help you learn, like to help you learn English? We did not. No, 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 no. no. All okay. the, all the television shows and everything is fully translated, mm -hmm. but translated like over, uh, not when you're completely silencing yeah. uh, another language. Um, so no, I okay. did not know what to expect. Not not only that, like if you getting used to one voice or one type of pronunciation doesn't mean that you understand everybody's. Yeah. So when, what I realized when I came here is that everybody has a like, completely different way of pronunciation <laughs> thing. There are yes. so many dialects and so many ways of saying things like, you know, Florida is not the same as New York. Yes. Louisiana is not. Yes. Louisiana Louisiana's has got their own language. They don't universe, even speak English. Like, yes. like I True. still don't understand. <laughs> no, they don't people. even speak we English don't down there. No, we don't exactly. get it. Exactly. No, that you know, is very true. So uh, when I came here, I realized I'm like, okay, I'm like, I thought I had, uh, I, I knew some, but uh -huh. no, I, I, in fact, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I did have a foundation. So yeah. I knew how to read. I knew like basic rules. The grammar is a little hard because we don't use like A and D and that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, and there's some words that are super close to each other in pronunciation. Yes. That's where my struggle. Where I think that English uh, became 
not as hard as people think because if that would be a hardest like hard language to learn it would not be become international language yeah then chain you know mandarin true. would become sure, sure. mandarin no or yeah, arabic yeah <laughs> yeah so i think that english is actually more of a friendlier languages to learn okay. because it's not genderized there is so many favorable thing about it but that pronunciation is a little bit hard. Hmm. Russian is a lot harder than yeah. English. <laughs> is it? Okay. You have to watch some of those TikToks about <laughs> learning Russians. Okay. Okay, I'll have to look that up. Um, I want to transition it here yeah. in just a second about how you even got to America. But before I do, I'm going to go back to something you were talking about earlier. And it was yeah. it goes back to the love and affection yeah. or the affection that comes from the love. <clears throat> you didn't have that with your father. But as a woman, was your mother allowed to be affectionate with her children did you ever feel yes. affection i guess oh is what i'm God. saying yes yeah. okay. yes 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 females are completely different universe so a they extremely accommodated to to a man so uh, we have to make sure that the the, the man is always happy like mm -hmm. it's it's completely different mm -hmm. and then moms our 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 moms she's yes. your teddy yeah. bear yeah yes yeah my mom like oh my god she's a saint <laughs> you will never meet the most positive person in in your entire life mm. like she is such a role model mm. she she grew up in siberia mm -hmm. then she you know got into kyrgyzstan mm -hmm. like her life she had eight at least <clears throat> eight lives <laughs> life spans in like lives in wow. life compared uh, to everybody else sure from you know she was born in 1953 mm -hmm. so right after the world war ii mm -hmm. still a lot of um you know rebuilding of economies and yeah. outcomes of all of that in siberia mm -hmm. then they had to move to kyrgyzstan yeah she was one of she was one of the first women that uh enrolled into uh programmer engineer programmer oh. uh, prog uh, courses mm -hmm. in Kyrgyz State University. Okay. So she was one of the first programmers wow. in Soviet Union. Wow. Yeah, she's incredibly intelligent. She was a incredible violin player. So you get your smarts from your mom is what you're saying. <laughs> That's exactly what <laughs> <laughs> She is a violin. I do not get any music skills from my mom. Uh. My mom is a violin player. Oh, so, okay. so you have to know, if you're a violin player, you have to have a perfect musical hearing. Yeah. No, my mom is everything. Oh, and so your parents are, are they still both still with us? Both no, my living? dad passed away a long time ago. He okay. had cancer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But your mom lives where? In San Francisco. Oh. Oh, that's okay. Interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's such a little artsy girl. Oh. <laughs> she knows everything about art. I mean, if you want to have a good conversation, you have to learn Russian and you have to talk to my mom. <laughs> How old is she? She is 73. Okay, so has she been watching, I don't want to get too far off track here, but has she been watching your new stardom on this TV show? Sorry, uh, she's 71, my aunt's 73. Okay. Yes, yeah. um, yes, she did. <laughs> She did. How did she respond to this, that? Again. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you that my mom is unbelievable? Yeah. So yeah. she's like, okay, I mean, that's good. Uh, I mean, right. She's always looking at everything from such a positive perspective. Uh -huh. She's like, you know, I'm like, mom, it's a TV show. Like, you know, I have yeah. to. <laughs> did you ever have a moment? Good. Did you ever have a moment, though, to where, like, I think Jill and I, or at least I have, I can't speak for Jill, but you know, we worked in radio for yeah. a long, long time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there's sometimes you would maybe, I would maybe say on the radio that I would, that would maybe I don't want this person to hear. Like, I, you know, I don't really care that everybody else hears this, but I don't know that I'd want my mom to hear yeah, me say that. For sure. So did you ever have a moment when you were going back and you're seeing these episodes, you don't really care. You're a risk person, you're a risk taker. You don't care what anybody thinks, but maybe but like, I don't oh, want my mom to right. see that. Maybe Did you ever mom... have any of those moments? <laughs> you know, after watching a TV show, because see, I, I did not know everything that took place and, until yeah. the show. Sure. Like, I did not know everything that happened there mm -hmm. until the TV show. Mm -hmm. At times, I do think that I wish my mom didn't have to see that yeah. and I have to, you know, present her in a positive way. But there is no more supportive person in my life Good. than my mom. Aww. You know, like from my education to my driver license to anything there is. My dad did not even want me to get a, an education Aww. or driver license. Uh -huh. She was the only person that, com 
you know, against all the rules, fought for me to get my college degree, mm -hmm. my driver license, right? When I was 18, this mm -hmm. is the soonest we can get that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I was trying to, <laughs> you know, prove myself. I'm like, you know, I can, I can drive a car. Mm -hmm. I, I, I should get an education. I'm not going to be that girl that's stuck in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I do have a future. Mm -hmm. So, like, and my mom... That was the only time that she actually rebelled against my dad mm -hmm. because she was such a compliant person to my father. Mm -hmm. um, but she completely advocated for my education, for my driver license, and she got my back 100% of the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I wish some of those yeah. things that I've learned about after, after the fact that the show was released, she did not see. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I know she's the only person that, you know, I can constantly rely on. And yeah. she's going to be positive and she's going to bring me like a full suitcase <laughs> of Russian food oh. any time Aww. of the day I That's see awesome. her. That's great. How did she end up in San Francisco? Like, why is she in San Francisco and you're in Missouri? Like, how did that end up? How That's a great question. Yeah. So um, once I finally received my American citizenship, uh, I was able to, there is a program that called Family You're in reunification uh where you can bring your immediate family to united states oh. which is your mother father uh, and brother and sister but mm -hmm. you know yeah so uh my br my father already passed away and so i just applied for my mom so she was granted um, a green card mm -hmm. to come to united states she's mm -hmm. a u.s citizen now she lived with us now um while I was super rebellious and I was able to get my driver's license at 18, <laughs> yes. back when my mom um, was a, of a younger age, women did not drive. Yeah. So she she was also rebellious and she tried to drive, but my dad mm -hmm. did not like it. It was all <laughs> six shift, old school Russian car, so it was not quite easy to drive. Yeah. So he said no, because she yeah. like drove into some kind of ditch. So he wasn't patient, right. which I know that <laughs> <laughs> very well. So he's like, no, you're not driving. So there was literally no women driving. Yeah. So when she moved to Kansas City with uh, with me, there is was not quite as uh, an access of public transportation or yeah. access okay. to. My mom is extremely artsy. She loves her museums. She likes her history mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So there was not an access to all of those things that would make her later life yeah. extremely comfortable and happy. Yeah, and um, so she. And she does not like to depend on anybody, just like ah, I am. You know, she yeah. wants to be independent. Yeah. So she, like, you know, as smart woman she is, got on the internet, found out about this program that they have in San Francisco. And it's um, a places where um, immigrants mm -hmm. have a, uh, you know, the political refugees or different refugees live, mm -hmm. where her Russian uh, language skill set comes you know, becomes very oh, important. Oh, okay. So she got a job uh, as a caregiver initially, and now she's a program coordinator for a bigger program. Wow. Uh, she lives, like, literally minutes from downtown San Francisco. Wow. She, she went to all the courses to get the job. She lives, you know, like, minutes away from downtown, mm -hmm. from all the museums, and she doesn't even have to drive a car. Oh, <laughs> yeah. right. So, yeah. Yeah. But she did get her driver license. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. good for her. She, Way she to go, mom. Uh, you mentioned your brother earlier. Yes. Is he the only other sibling you had? I have, uh, yes, full sibling, and I have a half sister. Okay. So is your brother still in? Uh, is he st is he in yes. the states? He's no. still over there. Okay. <laughs> he did not like you, it here. And, and you, no, he didn't. <laughs> no. Why is that? Um, you know, U U.S. is a quite a demanding country, so it's it's extremely high cost of living. And if you want to provide a, a very particular level of education and uh, additional activities to your children, it's almost like you have to be born in U.S. Okay. And you have to have an extreme level of English so you can build a very particular level of income to provide that hmm. for your children. Okay. He has two girls. Um, they both are in dance and art and i mean extreme oh. piano players yeah. i mean they are such intelligent girls but 
with him coming to like I moved here when I was 22 and I'm extremely fast learner so I I learned English or you know I, I yeah. built my career whatever yeah. I was able to provide for my daughter mm -hmm. and for myself when he get, got here he realized that he was not going to be able to provide the the level of lifestyle mm. and level of education for his girls with his current skill set sure. in mm. in this particular country if sure. that makes sense yeah. yeah 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 so he thought that if he will go back to our home country that he will be able to allow his two girls much better opportunities in life sure. okay makes sense mm -hmm. yeah um so let's get into how you showed up in the united states oh god <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she kind of told me this in the preliminary okay. call, but know, um, <laughs> it's uh, you, a guy came into your life and screwed it all up, huh? Pretty much. You know, <laughs> Not really. And I'm joking. Yeah. Obviously, you've got a blessing with your daughter, but kind of maybe uh, expand on that a little bit. No, for sure. Um, so my aunt moved to United States in a while ago, like the the first, like the second wave of immigration, like 90s, early 90s, when the Soviet Union collapsed. So she was very fortunate. And I always would look at her. I'm like, oh, my God, you know, United States, such an amazing country, like mm -hmm. land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they freaking Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> look like, oh, my God. Right. Like, how soon can I get there? <laughs> yes. Yes. But um so back when I was 16, obviously, like we, we tried to apply for a visa. It did not work out because the rules became so much stricter. So, um, and, and not to like, there are so many things happened afterwards, but then like uh, my aunt came over and said, like, Hey, you know, like there is so many other opportunities because I wasn't dating or anything like that at that time and mm -hmm. early like 2000s late 1990s when the internet became available like hey why don't you just like sign up for that internet service like mm -hmm. and, and meet somebody online like mm -hmm. a match.com type right, of thing because they always made fun of me because the mm -hmm. way i was thinking through my entire life i'm like oh i want to live one day in england uh and they're like no I, you have to live in the u.s like the way you are <laughs> oh. like you need to go to america <laughs> okay okay i don't know why they decided that but that right. was like yeah. an ongoing joke so you met family. this man on the internet it, it yeah i did okay I did. what site was it i'm curious oh god no I you don't remember, remember. <laughs> no. okay but it was like a match.com type it, of thing it, yes okay. yes so uh, we met on the internet and you know, I, we, I, you know, obviously there was m a, a several people that I talked to, but you know, uh, my 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 first husband, who I met on the internet, just you know, it it worked out at the time, you know. And he was it, here, and you were still there. Right, he was in the U.S. Okay. We started talking, and then he came to Russia. Um, back then, I already graduated my bachelor and i was taking my master program mm. but i moved to st pete russia mm. Mm. so he came to st pete uh we spent time and we, we were in constant communication and then um after that he I, I did come here on this 90 day fiance visa. Maybe I should be on that show. Oh my gosh. Oh, I wondered if like, so you weren't looking like, were you looking for someone in the United States so that you could come here more easily? No, I mean, no. I just was looking for somebody who is of match to my mindset. Yeah. Okay. So my, my the way I was thinking and the way I am. Was but you were targeting American men. Yes. Well, okay. uh, you know, I was giving it a try. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because you did want to yes. come here. Right? I, I did yeah, want to come did. here. So it didn't absolutely. make sense to go there find is, a man in that, that is Turkey absolutely, yeah. because not, not only that, here. like, I really liked Florida. I'm kidding. <laughs> <Because I'm laughs> well, who does it? Like, I'm done living in this cold weather. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, right. Man, exactly. I'm, cool. I'm like, can I please meet somebody from Florida? I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no. So he was from where? Uh, Florida. <laughs> oh, he was from Florida. Okay. Oh, okay, okay Coincidentally. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Which but, part you know, are we yes. kidding about? But no, <laughs> I mean, obviously, when when you grew up in a very particular um, marital environment mm -hmm. and you know how it is in a different country, of course, you want to explore more of a freedom, yeah. mm -hmm. more of an yeah. understanding and more of a interpersonal relationship then i'm like okay here i am i'm in in back in kyrgyzstan so i'm going and you know i'm in the in the country where i'm going to be 
I have to be a wife and I have to be in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you already knew you Raising didn't want to do that. Right. So yeah. I thought that, you know, why don't I think outside the box? Yeah. Why don't I... Uh, I met some a person from a different country. I already knew that I like United States because mm-hmm. my aunt lived here mm-hmm. and I seen her pictures and I'd seen that what they accomplished. Like I knew that I have an opportunity here. Sure. So why don't I meet somebody from a different country? No, I'm always sense, yeah. outside the uh, box thinker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that's all it, it came. And, you know, I met my daughter's father. Uh, I'm super grateful. I, I had that experience. Mm-hmm. You know, and we, we have an amazing daughter. She's my only child. Aww. So, you know, in the long term, you, we kind of grow apart. Mm-hmm. And you know, he is still you know now back in florida and has a great relationship with you say back in florida were you guys here then at some point this is how i moved here to kansas city okay i moved with um with my ex-husband to kansas city that's where we kind of you know ended our relationship gotcha so i'm I'm gonna pry a little bit yes (laughs) but what you say we just grew apart was there something more significant or you guys just fell out of love what happened there it's, um, I don't think it was falling out of love for both of us. It's more of a, I was, I was 22 when I moved to U.S. Okay. So when I met my daughter's father, um, I was in completely entirely different mindset, mm-hmm. you know, uh, understanding of world when I came to U.S. and I seen every, like my Again, like I am such a fast learner. Like everything changes in me constantly. Yeah. Like I have to move furniture. I have to do this, this, and that yeah. all the time. Uh-huh. So when we just were in the different universes, yeah. you, know? you outpaced him. Yes, in, well, in a way, you know, yeah. he was he he is born here. Nothing <clears throat> like he is a great person. Uh-huh. He is amazing father to my daughter, okay. but. Like I was on a completely different pace. I mean, I mm-hmm. I'm in a new world. Like yeah. I wanna, like I wanna conquer it. Like yeah. I wanna do so much. Sure. Yeah. And you so know, you still have a great relationship with him. It sounds oh, like. Oh, for sure. Good, 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 good. And when did you move here? Because I, I, you've said some different years and dates and things. So just so yes. we have like a. It visual. was 2010. 2010. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. So we're getting closer to getting into all the <laughs> dirt, what's going on with the TV show. Yes. But before we get to that, um, you obviously worked in, I was looking on your LinkedIn, you've worked <laughs> in a few different careers before yes. becoming, I guess, is your title as chief financial officer at the McBee dynasty. Is that fair? That's what the, yes. That's what they say, right? <laughs> okay. Tell me. Yeah. So, I'm doing everything. <laughs> uh, I saw where you, I'm going to screw this up, but would I see that at one point you were a general manager at Panda Express? Oh, for sure. Okay. Oh, yes. So you have really went. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, so how do you go from doing that to being one of the, the way Steven explained it, like this uh, incredibly bright executives at Pacific Dental before coming to the McBees? Kind of talk about the progression of your career. So um, it goes back to my schooling. I'm like, I sure, take my naturally. education super extremely serious. Like, and I'm constant learner. So, you know, before the internet, like, m- maybe most of the kids would spend their time doing whatever I was in the library mm-hmm. okay. reading and preparing for my projects or whatever because we did not have internet or computers or any of that stuff. So, um, and it's about, you know, your internal motivation and who you want to become or your internal art. So I always, you know, compare myself to, like, singers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. The singers are such a perfect example to be motivational because they will go and sing everywhere until they will have that break. And they don't care whether they have money, they mm. don't have anything, they will be like living out of the trailer. Yeah. This is their art and they're yeah. so passionate about it yeah. and they're so proud about it. Yeah. The same with me, like the business or whatever. This is my passion. This is my art. This is what I'm proud of. This is what I'm good of. So, you know, I will do whatever I have to do. And it may be like living out of the van, Mm -hmm. you know, like working bottom line jobs, whatever I have to take to find that one break. Mm -hmm. 
to show that I do have that ability mm-hmm. to to do business, and it took long time. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like, it took a very long time. I, I moved here right after I graduated college. I had a master's degree. I had to go through a staffing agency. I did not know English. Then I had my daughter. I had part time jobs. I worked whatever I could work, whether it's catering. I don't know, um, school like uh, preschool. Mm-hmm. I could. I was working, babysitting, whatever I could get my hands on. But every single opportunity I had, I took it as a a learning experience. Sure. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to get this idea from here, from here, from here. Mm. And then, you know, I will utilize it in the future. So um, once I separated from my Mm -hmm. ex-husband or my my father, my daughter's father, Mm -hmm. Um, my first job was actually for Kansas City Royals, and oh. I did get it because of the connection, it, not because I was just so talented. <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand, a lot of times, back in the day, if you are a woman that does not have a good resume, you have to have a way of connection to even get a job. So what was the connection? Yeah. It was the, a connection for me to get even a, a basic job at the Kansas City. But like, because of who? Because of him? No, 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 no. It was okay. a whole different... Just another connection. Some, some yes. other connection. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So I, I got my first... Like, what I'm uh, what I'm saying is, it's like, I did not care. It was a job. Yeah. Okay. It was like a basic job that I got. So I got this job, and I wanted to do absolutely the best I could at it. Like, I, I was, like, working overtime. I did not charge anyone. I'm like, I'm going to come in early to work and I'm not even going to clock in. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I want everybody to have such an amazing experience. So then I am noticed and recognized, right? Because I thought forward. So when I was working there, this is when I landed sort of my managerial job Mm -hmm. at the private company that was attending the stadium Mm. that gave me an ability to build a resume for my finally first resume (laughs) in life so i was like okay i'm going to hire somebody that you know they hired me and then like okay i have a somewhat of a career (laughs) right yeah so i i was like i'm constantly googling thank god google became available so i'm like okay what's next i i'm I'm going to hire somebody who is going to put together my resume Mm. Mm. so you know, in a way where I can post it yeah. and somebody's going to get, you know, reach out to me. So I posted my resume first and Panda reached out to me. Honestly, I I worked there not very long time, like maybe a um, little bit over a year. Mm-hmm. The biggest impact on my life, biggest impact on my career mm-hmm. and biggest uh, learning experience. Tell us why. The way their culture, the way their standard, the way they treat their people, the way they think about business, there is so many things that is so amazing. To this day, I'm like, swear to Panda, I'll eat there every day. Panda <laughs> I mean, Express. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Like in one year, they did the biggest impact on my life that wow. fully changed my life. Did it? Did you? I mean, that's really high praise. Really, really high praise. <laughs> it's really did you deserve it. because of that? Did you ever feel like being a lifer there? And maybe just working your way up the corporate ladder, or, no. or was it kind of a love hate relationship? Like there was all of this great impact, but at the same point in time, you hated working in fast food. You know, honestly, um, there was element of everything. Kind of, you know, as I was trying to figure out everything, you know, I'm finally on my own. Mm-hmm. I have to provide for my daughter. There was um, still like a cultural things. Like now I'm like, kind of, you know, I have to pay attention to my child. You mm-hmm. know, there is mm-hmm. a work-life balance and I don't have it here. Um, initially, I think there was a level of frustration with them, but not until I extracted myself from it and I started building you know, further up that I realized how incredibly valuable they were okay. as my stepping stone into my future career. So I'm looking at now it's they are like this pay forward type of thing. Okay. And I, I'm I'm going to be loyal forever in a different way, not sure. maybe at their employee, but maybe yeah. sure. as their customer yeah. or, you know, ad- advocate for what they're trying to do as a 
corporate entity, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And wow. so then from there you go to Pacific <laughs> Dental? Yes. So actually, um, as I was working with Panda, again, I remember my resume with the um, a professional services. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, like this is how they do it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. let me <laughs> <laughs> spice it up a little. Sure, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I hired, at that point, I, I saved the money. I was very wise about my money, so I was spending them on the thing that I felt that will contribute into my, you know, my daughter's future. Sure. So I, I revamped my resume and I posted it on LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. So uh, Pacific Dental Recruiter reached out to me, and I'm like, I'm gonna use all of my skill set that I just learned <laughs> in one year. <laughs> nice. At Panda Express, yes. And I'm gonna just impress everybody. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. So I did. <laughs> And I got the uh, general uh, operations manager position with Pacific Dental. It it took like multiple interviews. You Mm -hmm. know, I had to be extremely uh, creative to even go through all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But ultimately, I did get the position. Uh, I I had an incredible experience with Pacific Dental. It was a learning experience. Like, I've learned so much, like, and it was so inspirational too mm. and it gave me uh, a feel that yes you know any i can do that because you know at the end of the day peggy and andrew from uh band express they were just immigrants you know mm. and they started from nothing and they built those restaurants and they are incredibly successful wow and uh pacific dental um they you know he was um his father was a dentist and he started managing his practice and he built it to incredible, you know, business now. Yeah. Like, well, you know, maybe I can do that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what, how long were you there? It's a two part question. How long were you there? And you've already kind of spoken to the amount of impact and specifically what that impact was coming from Panda Express. Can yeah. you speak to the impact that you had and what you learned from being at Pacific Dental? Yeah. I was at Pacific Dental for uh, about five years. Okay. Uh, every single minute I uh, been with Pacific Dental, I utilize suits for us because what what everybody don't don't realize about corporate offices they they spend enormous amount of time and it's steve thorn that is um actually the founder of the um uh, pacific dental uh how much time steve spent to build that corporation Mm -hmm. and the sacrifices that he made um you know, I, I, when I went to any of our meetings, I, I was focusing on what he was saying, like, you know, all of this stuff. Like, he was constantly giving us such a key points. He was such a giving person. Like, he was giving us a key points to basically set us up for success. Okay. And if you are open to all of, you know, Peggy and Andrew and Steve's feedbacks, you can build your own corporations just be humble, you know, mm-hmm. listen to their advices mm-hmm. and, and take it to, you know, use it life, implement use it. it. Use it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then it's, were you getting recruited a lot during those five years or even towards the end of those five years at Pacific dental to where then I, well, let's we'll just start there. Did, were you getting recruited to, to move on from Pacific dental ever before going to the McBee's? Honestly, I was so happy with Pacific dental. I did not even put any of my resumes i was this was just like there was so much opportunity there Mm -hmm. so i did not even put my resume or there was nothing happening however i did have my other obligations you know like i had to provide for my daughter Mm -hmm. i had to make sure that she has an access to all of her activities she she did gymnastics Mm -hmm. and um and she did gymnastics on a very competitive level mm-hmm. in a very, you know, um, known gym. She went to gauge gymnastics. So, oh, right um, off I seventy in Blue Springs. Yes. Yeah, I'm familiar yeah. with that place. Yeah. So, and it's a it's an extremely great gym. You know, mm-hmm. they yeah. they've produced so many champions, yeah. and um, because of her skill set, she she does have a. Um, a scholarship to a college now and she's competing for and tumbling uh in in school now so and not like not only that they gave her a, a way of approach life and a, a very 
structured, mm -hmm. like, I don't know, discipline. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I get it. She is so disciplined, you know, she is so responsible. And you have to have, like, that way, you know, that support in your life mm -hmm. to be that responsible and that disciplined and, you know, to be so uh, proactive in your education. So I'm forever grateful grateful for that but yeah, yeah. you know when she was going there you know obviously it it's also has its own financial bear you know sure. yeah. responsibility <laughs> right yeah. so right. um i am i'm a type of person that you know i'm like i i'm just gonna make it happen mm -hmm. okay. i'm not gonna ask anybody for anything i'm just going to make it happen so i started my own business so while i was working at panda i started like a little side like a weekend business cleaning business so uh -huh. i um i i literally i i feel like i work 20 hours a day for mm. <laughs> wow many many years mm. <laughs> until and you, you were were you so you were the owner operator and cleaner pretty much everything okay. actually my my poor child had to go with me on the weekend i'm like okay i mean you want to do the gymnastics and you want to do that you want you you have to be respectful you know how to you know you you need to know how the money made like the money don't fall of the sky yeah like right. whatever people see it's not just like oh it was given to me yes you, she went <laughs> this child <laughs> God, I you're so too. proud mm. so so proud she she went with me on the weekends and i'm like okay you're gonna do the easy task like get the yeah. vacuum cleaner and go back mm -hmm. <laughs> wow I mean, she was amazing yeah oh and she's how old now she's 22. 22. where does she go yeah, to school okay. she goes to uh belmont abbey in north carolina oh, sure. wow. right outside charlotte wow. she's a senior this couldn't year. find something closer to home no i did not want her to be close you to wanted home. to move on oh, okay I wanted her to be, this is was such a this is such a important part of growing up is separating yourself and having your own experiences. I agree. I agree. You have to move your kids out. You still have, to, they have to grow up. You mm -hmm. cannot be constantly, you know, parenting them. Jill, are you listening to this? I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> Jill, Actually, I, I, I don't want to get into a whole lot of detail. We went but to a few colleges. There was a little shortcut that make a while. I wanted her to be kind of far away. So, there is a difference between one child and multiple kids. Uh -huh. One child is extremely dependent on the parent, uh -huh. and they are um, they don't have the same separation. So, like, I'm like, okay, I'm like, <laughs> we need the space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. need to yeah. learn to become an adult because I was always over parenting her. But at the same time, I know my boundaries. Like, okay, you're in college. I'm going to do that clear cut. You know. Yeah. yeah. So um, I had to do that but i still made it um to where her college is like conveniently 10 minutes out of the airport and oh, yeah, <laughs> that's, direct good. Flight. That's, good. that's good i'm sure it was difficult i mean you sound very convicted with that decision to push her away to go outside of the state yeah. but i mean at the same point in time you were very um you were very involved with her life you were very committed to her life with doing Very. everything that you were doing, creating the side hustle to fund her life. Mm -hmm. yes. um, so that had to have been emotionally very difficult to separate is even though you sound very convicted with the decision to move her far yeah. away. And and the reason I, I did that is because, you know, when, when you're only child and I, I never been, but I realized that she doesn't have that safety net to fall on. Like I, I, I realized that uh, I'm not, like permanent on this earth <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and uh, and what i was seeing is that she was becoming way too attached to me mm. so what i wanted to create is a level of separation when she's becoming an independent human being to where you know when my time to go she she can continue a full blown life and experience the experience of, that she you know sure. it, are in store for her and sure. not just like being completely heartbroken because she doesn't have siblings or anybody to fall on so i'm like okay i'm going to make sure that she she can function completely independently right mm -hmm. and if something happens to me she you know she celebrates you know whatever you know my experiences are sure. and moves on and makes a difference in this life yeah 
good. That's incredible. <laughs> Way to go, mom. <laughs> hey, <laughs> round of applause for mom. Whatever. <laughs> Mother's Day is just around the corner, by the way. It Everybody is. take care of your mother <laughs> mm-hmm. as yes, we're recording please. this <laughs> on April 10th. Um, okay, so at some point then you decide that you're going to move away from Pacific Dental. Were you recruited by the McBees to go there or were you seeking the, you know, were you putting the resume out there towards the end of your five years? So you yep. were recruited by them. Yes. How did they find you and know that that was the, you were the person that they needed? Yeah. So actually that was a complete accident. I did meet Steve. Uh, that was a whole, you know, like we, we all lived in Blue Springs. So that was a complete incident. But um, from that initial connection, I started working with Steve and Steven and I just did the part-time job job with them um like i i've been looking for all sorts of party jump jumps you know on the weekends or you know after hours or whatever that is so i did do a part-time job with them for quite some time before they part-time uh, doing what j- they you just might just bring your microphone the operations a you know b- building the building the uh, operations and financials and gotcha. just evaluating where they at in in mm. business so um, as I was continuing to work with Steve and Steven and, um, with their businesses, I earned their trust. Um, sure. and as the business was continuing to grow, they, they offered me a full-time job. So mm-hmm. that's how it happened. Was it hard for you to walk away from Pacific Dental with a five-year, you know? It was. Yeah. <laughs> it was because. Did it take I, a lot of coaxing for, I mean, there was there a lot, or, or was it one offer and boom, you're in with the McBees or was it year after year and, and lots was, of negotiating? Um, it was definitely some negotiating and, and, and me being ambitious because, um, you know, I, I had an opportunity to be a part owner and, you know, build something else on my own with actually partners versus being an employee. Uh, so that was a big thing for me, you know, mm-hmm. actually being able to bring my vision and my skill set and contribute to building something else. Like I did not care about uh you know, stepping back back in a career or being, you know, making a pay cut or any of that type of stuff. Right. What I was caring about is the fact that my skill set, my knowledge, that, um, you know, I met the right people at the mm-hmm. right time mm-hmm. and we will be able to build something more than just me being an employee. <laughs> okay. And how long ago was that? Like, how long have you been with it's, them? It was almost five years uh, mm-hmm. since I started full time. So yeah. Gotcha. Right. It was like 2019, April, March 30th was my last day with Pacific Dental. Okay. April 1st, so just now, 2019, yeah. that when I started full-time at the farm. Nice. <laughs> there you go. All right. So now we get to get into the nitty gritty of the McBee <laughs> dynasty, which y'all have been waiting for. And yes. uh, so you talked about being in Blue Springs and Steve was in Blue Springs. Did, you, did I hear that correct? Yes. When you were doing the part-time stuff? So I'm just going to come right out of the gate and ask, did you guys have any kind of romantic relationship then? Um, <laughs> look at you. I guess that, yeah. <laughs> look well, at you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to get a well, gauge of how know, long this has been going like, on. Uh, you know, Steve had a very, uh, very complicated relationship through entire, you know, his entire marriage. And, mm-hmm. and I, I, it's it's very hard sometimes for me to talk about it, but when we did uh, meet uh, Steve, you know they were separated and um, they were going through their marital mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. So it was such a long and long process that even came in. I don't even know how to. Like, That's all right. Like, I, I don't even, I didn't even know how long he's yeah. been divorced when he got divorced. I guess what I was trying to understand was did the relationship that you start with Steve happen prior to you becoming a full-time employee? And, and then I guess essentially a, um, a, a part owner of what they had started to build there. Yes, um, definitely. Like when we initially met and kind of knew about each other, there was a a spark Mm -hmm. uh, that led into, you know, learning a lot more about their, you know, family relationship Mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But that's the initial spark definitely led to Mm. 
Okay. Um, yeah. The prof- professional relationship. Yeah. Were you concerned about that? Mm. <laughs> Every woman always concerned. No, no, about no, no. That. Well, duh. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> like, All right, touche. Like, like, were uh, you just getting the job because? I um. Well, or what? Were yes, that. And would were you concerned that it would create conflict? I mean, look, we're we're into this thing five weeks. This the, yes. the episodes. If you're watching it live on USA Network, and at the time of which we're recording this podcast, <laughs> we're into the fifth week, right. which without giving away too much if you haven't seen this yet, because I want people to go watch the McBee Dynasty. You can see it streaming all the episodes on Peacock. Um, when you get in the fifth week, there's some very uncomfortableness between you and Steve due to circumstances of which we will talk about here in just a bit. But you actually ask him if you should put in your resignation. And so what I'm asking ultimately then is premeditating, knowing that you're going to go work full-time, have part ownership in this company. Was there a concern that, because of the spark and relationship with Steve, that that might create conflict that you're Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Yeah. I was terrified. Oh my God. I was so fucking terrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So why, but, but, but obviously not so terrified that you wouldn't accept it. And was it because it was it because they gave you part ownership in the company that you said, okay, I will. The risk was worth. Yeah, exactly. It, it, the risk was worth the reward. Uh, Ultimately, at the end of the day, regardless of the relationship, I knew what was my... Yeah, I'm very confident in my skill set. Mm-hmm. And I knew that um, business-wise, I met my perfect match to where we can build something more. And, you know, the relationship or no, re- no relationship, you know, there may be a turbulence at some point, but it can be overcome but you don't meet the business partners every day of your life. Mm-hmm. So when you meet somebody who trusts you with the business and all that stuff, so it, it's worth taking a risk. Mm-hmm. I can always find, like, I, I am very confident in what I know. Yeah. I can always find the same job if this opportunity is not going to work out. There is always a need for operations. Like, no <laughs> this doubt. is one of the most sick, jobs in us and i i can work 20 hours a day i mean i i I knew that about myself Mm -hmm. so i knew that if our partnership our venture is not going to work out i can always find the same job i always had that you know side business that already been growing on the side Mm -hmm. that can support my daughter at the end of the day my biggest concern was Supporting my daughter. Yeah. yeah. Like, I can always support myself. Sure. But her, I wanted her to have a better experience than I did in life. And I wanted her to have an access to education, to sports, to whatever she needed to, you know, build her future. Sure. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> hmm. All right. So let me clarify. It was a negotiation that took some time. Fair? Well, of course. Right. And so because of the fear... Um, you were basically because of the giving the, um, some, some interest in the company, some ownership, that was what basically allowed you to say, okay, I can put fear over here and I can jump forward with this. Okay. All right. So, um, he talks about Steve. I'm talking about Steve now. Steven's dad, if you guys are, you know, wondering and getting confused about, you know, and not seeing the show yet. Steve is senior. Steven is the son. Steven is who we've had on this podcast a couple of times. He's very honest and clear in the show that he's very transparent with you and others about his not wanting to be locked down into a committed relationship. Is that in fact true? <laughs> Do you really think? Imagine a guy that comes in, hey, Galena, I'm going to be in relationship with you, but I'm going to have you Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. I'm going to be free with other women. Like, mm. come on, So guys. you're telling me it's a stupid question? <laughs> it is a stupid question. <laughs> so then I have to ask, I've been told that this show is 100% authentic. Is it him is saying? And he probably had that in his mind when he did that, but it's definitely not like it was, you know, it wasn't presented. You like, it wasn't presented to you that way, and you didn't me, approve, right, right? Exactly. Like, yes, maybe in his mind it was true, but in him, like, 
No, I'm like, what kind of normal woman was going to be like, okay, let me think about that. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to like, yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> okay. So is this when we had our preliminary discussion and you were basically saying, hey, I got some things I want to say. Is that part of what you were you know, wanting to kind of get off your chest yeah, or like, kind of clear your name with all of like, this. Nobody and like nobody's going to be like say that. Okay, I'm. Uh, hey, Galena, I'm going to like. Let's just have that understanding on the front line. Usually, that type of understanding happens when I'm not stupid and I will mm -hmm. catch you. <laughs> Yeah, and then I ask you a question, and then you are having an excuse like, "Oh, I never told you I will be." <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I'm trying to connect all the dots here. So you start somewhat five, let's just call it five years, maybe four, hell, even three. Let's call it three years ago. You start having this romantic <laughs> relationship with Steve. Fair? Uh, you come out with this show, which is filmed last summer, mm -hmm. and you're blindsided by this relationship with Brooke. Oh, is that yeah. fair? Yes, it is fair. So you're saying that in the three years leading up to before filming this show, you didn't know of any other relationships or any other um, women that Steve I might had, be involved um, with? I had suspicions that something was going on just because of the behaviors, but it was never presented to me in a way to like, hey, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, do you really think <laughs> that that would be the case? And definitely not anything that happened late, late, late mm -hmm. after yeah. that. So, yeah. no. I mean, I had to figure it out because I just took interest into, like, okay, the, you know, the whole thing is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's not how the normal relationship would go. Mm -hmm. um, something is not adding up. <laughs> right. That's when, you know, I'm like, oh, I never said that. Like, I never did that. I'm like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so now I, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to ask questions that maybe don't make sense because I'm not caught up. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> is it worth it? Like, is what you found out after the fact, uh, like, are you, are you good with that? Or do you wish you hadn't found out or do you wish the show hadn't happened because of it or like, no I, I don't I never like I, th I think the show is amazing yeah you know like I think it's 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 just I mean it's great I mean and I'm great that I had that experience okay. uh I you know at this point when I kind of learned about everything that's happened I am like at awe and I'm like I'm just confused and like I am I, I don't even know how to react to it. I'm sad. I'm angry. I'm probably like hurt. Of, I'm extremely hurt. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, and I'm extremely hurt about very particular elements of that because that was just going like, comp like everybody should be heard about this experience. Mm -hmm. Like I cannot think about one person that would not be heard about mm -hmm. some of the experience that I've learned about the show. And I did not know about some of those things, you know, <laughs> about Nashville and about all that stuff until the show aired. Mm. So like, yeah, I, I have the right to be heard. <laughs> no yeah. doubt. No. Oh, and, yeah. and keep yeah, yeah. in mind, we're not here to judge that, yeah. you know, right. I, we're, we have a podcast that you know, and our job is to navigate the conversation. You're the star of the show. Right. So, um, so know that we're not here to p cast judgment on, on any way, but I'm going to ask some tough questions because yes. we see, and I see after doing the interview, like the, Stephen McBee's podcast is about five episodes or five listens away from being the most listened to podcast on this, uh, on this pop around podcast. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So there's a lot of engagement. There's a lot of comments that are going on from based on the material that we've put out there on every social platform. Um, and so I see the comments and I have to then take and observe that communication and the things that are being said and ask questions that are going to be, that are going to resonate with the fans. Um, and so my, that leads me to the next question, which is, you're finding out information that you didn't know about until now, which is like right now. 
Mm, yeah, the show is airing, airing right, now. right, it is right now. now. Now, you've yeah. probably seen all 10 episodes. Is it? Honestly, I chose. Um, <laughs> really? You haven't? I, I, I have not seen all 10 episodes just because. How far I along are you? To, like, I, I watch pieces and bits just because you know, it's, it's. It's different for when you're on TV show. You you're aware of you know how do I sound, how do I look, you know how do I present myself. Like um, it's it's different to be on the other side yeah. of the uh, you know screen. Yeah. So yeah. Um, no, but I am also aware. But I became aware of all the situation that happened on the show, and the situation that happened on the show possibly was one of the reasons why I, I paused watching it mm. into its entirety until I'm mentally prepared for it. Is the reason the relationship that he had with Brooke? Is no, that the reason? Not necessarily. Or, the, or not only her wrecking Brooke. your vehicle? Um, th- that and that and further in the episode. And it's just an entirety. In the episode or in the series? Um. There was more. The, uh, right. So happened. I'm only five weeks into this. Okay. And so. we're, and, and Kurt, <laughs> then and, you have to keep on watching. T- <laughs> oh, on look at there. <laughs> so something else has happened. Something else where will happen. Everyone is in real time to yes. cause you to go. I can't watch anymore. That, I've yeah. got to give my mind a break on all this new information. Just because it's starting to. It's too much. Because some of the comments were, you know, some of the suspicions that I had uh, and some of the comments that were starting to pop up on the social media. I'm like, I, I don't really want to know anymore. Uh, <laughs> like, this is enough. Hmm. Galena, <laughs> when we had Steven on <clears throat> and and it was. I mean, I basically asked him straight up, like, hey, you know, what's the deal with your dad and Galena? And yep. she's the CFO. She's a very, and I didn't even know until I think I knew a, a recently, but not before today, that you were a part owner of the company. Still a significant part of what they are doing in the growth that they had had. And I said, does this ever worry you? And, and he said, very much so. It keeps me awake at night. And I said, has she ever got to the point where she's like, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. And he says multiple times and you're going to see it in the show. Mm. So I guess I have to ask then before we get into more meaty details, like, where are you at? Like you're hurt. It's clear that you have all of these different confusing emotions. You mentioned anger and confusion, but what I'm really seeing is pain and hurt. And, um, are you able to continue? With that, where are you at right now with your with your career as it stands today on April 10th, 2024? That's actually a great question because, you know, as of April 10th, 2024, uh, my, my sole focus is my career because I realized that, you know, this is something that is constant and this is something that allows me a stability in life. So my entire focus is on my career. It's on our businesses and what we can do with that. Like, um, I just put a pause on any kind of relationship or any, you know, any me trying to build that up mm-hmm. or even worry about it. You know, my... My worry is about, you know, hey, you know, where's my daughter? You know, what is her education level? Like, mm-hmm. what kind of future she has? Uh, where is our businesses are? Big, you know, from <laughs> learning about everything I have, you know, <laughs> I yeah. have to mm-hmm. be an adult. You know, we have so much more happening in life that not everybody has an opportunity to build or to evolve. And that's what I'm going to stay focused on until everything settles in my head. Like I am such a logical person. Mm. Like I am not an emotional person. So like I am very like, I build everything like a programmer. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. If something is gets off, like it's almost, it stumbles me. Like I don't even know how to deal with it. It mm-hmm. takes me a moment to put it back in place to where it makes sense. So right. that's where I'm at. Like right. I, you know, some of the things completely makes no sense to me. It's absolutely not worth even spending my time on. So I'm going to spend my time what makes sense for me. 
Mm-hmm. What, Galena, what you're still a human being, business. though. You're still a human I being. I know you want to be a tough, strong person, <laughs> and you are. And in, in so many ways, and listening to you, I have so much admiration for you with what you've been able to do with your career, with the way you were brought up, and how you came here, and how you brought up your daughter. There's so much that you've said that I think is aspiring to young women today. I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart. And as a father who's got a 10-year-old daughter, I would love for her to hear you know, what you've been through and how you got to where you are today. I think it's absolutely admirable, but you are still a human being. You still are a person who has emotions. And I know that you're trying to remove emotion from this, but it is really difficult to separate personal from professional when they're both connected together. It is. Right. It's an and so challenge. you still have to have conversations with Steve. I imagine you still have to have meetings with Actually, him. Actually. No, I don't really. Uh, and this is what makes it <laughs> easier. And this is what I want everybody to understand. Here we like, go. Y- you, I mean, I know what I'm doing. I don't have to have a constant hand holding a conversation. Like if Steve wants me to make a particular decision, he'll reach out to me. If he do, he's, he's not liking the decision I made in regards to the business, he can reach out to me and let me know that. But I am my own independent person, and this is what I want all the girls to hear and all you know everybody to hear. Even if you're so, somewhat involved in a relationship and the relationship is not perfect, you can still do the business. Like if the other partner is more uh, you know above you and they don't like your decision, but they don't want to have a, a good communication set. They will reach out to you eventually if they don't like your, if they don't right. like the decision you make. Okay, you have to be strong about that, and you have to just go with the flow. Like, yeah. okay, you know, if this is not working out, that's fine. But y- what but is, you're the, working what is re- the alternative? What is no? The there's not. I mean, to be a, to be efficient and <laughs> successful, there is no other alternative. No. But what I'm ultimately trying to understand then is before this show and before all the pain that came from this show. You had a you had more con, um, communication professionally. Obviously, we we know about yeah. the personal, but but professionally, you had more communication with Steve. But it's because of what has come out recently in the last five weeks. You have, um, con, with conviction, decided to not have as much communication with Steve. Is that fair to say, or am I understanding it correctly? Uh, no. Um, okay. So you guys well, didn't have a lot was of co- always two different. Um, channels of communication there was a personal and professional okay they never were intermingled okay so we always made it clear that we're going to have a personal and professional uh, uh communication so i've already mastered my professional communication with him prior to the show mm-hmm. and what, what it really affected the whole show and me learning what happened really kind of affected only the personal level okay. which has nothing to do with the professional i have I cannot stress enough how much clear separation I have between the personal and, you know, professional. I may be like completely upset and whatever, but I'm still going to be on time at no the doubt. meeting. I'm going to like answer all my emails. Maybe I'll miss a day at work sometimes, but I will catch up like yeah. that evening okay. so <laughs> or the following day. Yeah. So you're saying that what Steven shared with us when he was here about that he loses sleep about it and he's worried about it. And you don't think he has anything to worry about because you not. have such a clear separation that there's nothing and, to worry and about. And it's getting more clear and clear, you know, as okay. actually at this show, like as we are continuing to grow, uh, you know, in our relationship, whichever way, I mean, whatever way it, you know, kind of weird that relationship is, like the business, our business is my priority at the mm-hmm. end of the day. I mean, I, I love what we build. It's so much more than just the relationship because our business enterprise will go into the future way past our relationship. Our relationship just like goes away with mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. when we can build something way more than just a relationship. So you know, my ability to clearly separate that and continue to get better at it, that's what I'm focusing on. Okay. <laughs> wow. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. So you had made, the sh- let, me, let me start here. Yes. The show shows you and Steve having regular interaction professionally. Yes. Are you having, is that real? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Is it that way still today? 
Yes. Regardless of all the BS. Uh, regardless. I mean, so we you, cannot so operate the business without uh, interactions. Uh, about okay, well, you just made it sound like that you don't have to have a lot of interaction with him. Because we, we've we developed, so that's that's what people don't understand. There is a different level of relationship trust. So you have your personal relationship mm-hmm. trust or you have your professional relationship trust. And you're building up both simultaneously. Mm-hmm. So Steve and I have much better business relationship trust. He trusts in my business decisions Mm -hmm. like I've never seen before. So if I am making a business decision, he and I will just like text him like, hey, this is the decision I made. You can make it and just move on. I can move on and I can make it because he trusts me. Business-wise, Steve trusts me like I've never seen anybody trust me before. Like I can... Take, make a decision and run with it, you know. And but I'm, you're not you're not going to take your personal hurt from the personal no. stuff because if that affects the business, that affects your job. Not only because you're high up in the company, but a partner also. Well, so it's, you can't. It's not only you know. It's not about my job and me being a partner. Again, like I came from a broken country. I can like f- live on in the forest. To mm-hmm. be honest with you. I have a responsibility to over 200 people. Mm-hmm. Like, this is how I view my professional or personal relationship with Steve. Like, yes, I can get upset. I can get frustrated about our personal relationship. I can take a day off to, you know, be frustrated. But the end of, at, at the end of the day, I have responsibility mm-hmm. to hundreds of employees that rely on me to provide for themselves. Sure. So that's who I'm going to put ahead of myself. Gotcha. You know, like whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Let me draw a scenario for you. Yes. You're going to have a big board meeting. All right. Mm -hmm. And you both are going to be in the same room and it's going to happen tomorrow. Okay. April 11th. And you're sitting here with us right now sharing some vulnerability and I'm feeling some pain and hurt from you. Is that true? Okay. Okay. So that's accurate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, of course I'm. <laughs> so you're going into this room and you're telling me you can cut, you can just take a switch, flip that switch, and you're going to see him in that boardroom tomorrow morning and you're not going to feel any emotion because when you it, can when, separate it. <laughs> when it comes to the board meeting tomorrow, yes. But if we're going to dinner the, the minute after, I, I'm not going guaranteeing that switch. So, yes. No, I don't when see it comes how you can meeting, do that. It, it's you're it telling is. me there's nothing inside you that when you see him even though you're there for a professional reason you don't look at him and there's not a part of you that hurts because you're seeing him and you're thinking something personal at because any I'm moment not looking at him at those times i'm looking at way bigger picture than you know the goal steve, is, okay. steve is not the only person in the universe like i'm looking okay at, <laughs> he might say otherwise right <laughs> i'm like i'm looking at my obligations to my daughter my right. obligations to okay. our company and my obligations to our partners there are so many more that i yes like and this is one of the thing that I, I guess maybe in my leadership career I've struggled the most because I can't separate myself. I can separate my personal time. There were, don't get me wrong, there were instances that, you know, uh, I was pushed too far when I, you know, I had a couple of the episodes, but I, you count on that. Like I've learned from this episodes and you will not see them ever again. But if we are after hours, like, and we all get together and something, you know, uh, sabotages me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can, the hell get loose. <laughs> okay. I can give, be a pain in the ass. <laughs> all right. Well, no, and I'm not here trying to, and sorry that I keep beating a dead horse with this, but I just find it fascinating that you can flip that switch because I that, I, that I is really, would you say, I mean, that would be really difficult for most I people. Think, I mean, yeah, I would think so. I've, I've not been in a situation. No. I've not been in your situation, like in a personal relationship and a professional relationship where you you just, I don't know how you don't, I don't, I don't know how you separate, but it yeah, makes sense. I mean, sense. you have to, I mean, otherwise may, it, I would have to quit like long mm-hmm. time ago. Yeah. <laughs> right. it, it makes sense. I just am not sure that everyone could do that. It's, 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 it's tricky. Yeah. I'm sure it's it is. tricky, but, and it's not everybody that can understand or relate to, but at the end of the day, when I am making my decisions, I am not the only person that I make the decision based on. Okay. Right. Well, and I would, I would have to think, not that it's all the same, but that the way you were brought up and what you lived through kind of, I 
I don't know, was some, some of the formulation for that. Like you had yes. to leave a place because of things that were out of your control. Right. Yes. And you couldn't just be like, oh, poor me. We have to go take a two week trip in this, <laughs> you know, <laughs> on this you know, like, <laughs> right. And, and be pity party about it. It's no. like, we got to handle the situation. We got to find a place mm-hmm. to go somewhere that's safe yeah. where we can, I mean, you're still a kid, but you know, still you're going, okay, well we got to make money. And then you get there and you're like, okay, now I have to fit in and I've got to, I don't know, like get different clothes. I've got to do all these different things. Like it was kind of business. Right, it it uh, is, and I mean, you just become a business. So, uh, and you you learn how to de- detach your emotion from the business. At the end of the day, you know we have to have food on our plate, yeah. <laughs> and you know we have to have water and yeah. some kind of you know mm-hmm. yeah. temperature. <laughs> so, is there anything you do on a daily basis um, that, and you you said where you grew up was atheist. So mm-hmm. I don't necessarily need to know if you have any, have found any kind of religion or anything, but like for some people, that's what they would start their day with, you know, like, like reading scripture or praying or whatever that is. But so if that's not part of it, okay. But do you have some daily routines of like, this is how I start my day and this is how I'm going to make it so that it's a successful day. How do you and- get your mind right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. No, I honestly, um, great question. So yes, um, I, I do, I do believe, uh, in God. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a, a prayer that I say, say daily. It, it is in Russian language, mm. <laughs> pretty much the only prayer I know just because I was, uh, about 14 when the religion finally made its way back okay. so the the only prayer i learned in russian mm-hmm. uh i i am still in the uh, in you know that experience of learning about you know church and mm-hmm. the all of that stuff but yeah. i definitely think that there is something else out sure, there sure. Um, it's very different for me just because i wasn't born to it mm-hmm. um but my routine is just just focusing on tomorrow to be honest with you i'm like i never never in my life i do do i focus on the positive i mean on the negative I, i'm yeah. like i'm constantly thinking like on outcomes like what can i do like if there is a problem i don't focus on the problem like okay the problems are always going to be there yeah how can i resolve it mm-hmm. like what can i do yeah. i don't even waste a second of my life on dwelling on negatives Mm -hmm. i get upset about what happened on tv show don't get me wrong i'm a human you just said that. i Mm -hmm. always said that like you know people think like i'm you know the way i do business like hey guys i just want to remind you i'm not a robot Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) i there there is a i can see where they might be confused though but at the same time like I, I, if I will waste my time on all this negatives and stuff, I'm going to miss out on so many amazing things sure. and on so many cool things that can happen in life. So, yeah, I mean, it's not easy to put those things aside. Like, yeah. I, I struggle with it, and I struggle it, with it at night, and maybe I don't sleep some nights, and, and maybe I get extremely upset and unreasonable certain nights when Steve and I, you know, even have a dinner or go with our friends, like... Yes, I mean, I'm a human. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me expand on that with the, this question, because you had made reference to this a little bit earlier. You made it sound like that you and Steve are still working on your relationship. And I took that as personal. Is there anything there, or has the has the outcome and the news and all of the information that has come with this show <laughs> cut off that any future possible personal relationship with Steve? Where are you at there? <laughs> Again, I'm just literally like I'm taking a pause at even thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And I am really focusing on on the businesses and growing the businesses. We we have all the car washes and the farms and, you know, all of the other things that are happening. And because it became so complex, I do not want that to preoccupy my brain. I'm like, but I, you just said that you're going and doing personal things with him, like having we, dinners. We, well, yeah. I mean, so you still have dates? Friends. No, no, we don't have dates. Well, I don't think we. So ever these would be dates. like business dinners, not business dinner, like friendship dinners. Like we we go with bunch of people. Mm-hmm. We def, like we definitely don't have any kind of date, like one on ones. No, 
No, but we we go out together with multiple people. Like. That is so strange to me. Are you dating someone else? No, God, no. <laughs> so you talk I'm about scared. a personal pause. This is get, a pause. Yeah, major pause. So what's your free time? What what takes up your free time? <laughs> I don't. Well, you don't have free time. First of all, I do not have a free time. And when <laughs> when I do, to be honest with you, I I I like to go out with my pugs for walks and mm -hmm. I love my chickens and I you know I'm not at the age when I am in a, such a desperate need for the relationship I'm yeah. very comfortable with myself I'm yeah. comfortable with my career I'm comfortable with what I achieved I don't have a craving to be with a man and have their approval and go on a date or right. anything like that I'm way past all that I'm not <laughs> 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 like, I am comfortable where I am. Yeah. I am totally cool with, like, snuggling with the pugs, going to for walks with them, mm -hmm. taking them to my work. Like, like it, it's okay to be that way. Yeah. And it's okay to be uh, that way after finding out a, sort of a traumatic experience. You have to take a pause. Yeah. You have to, like, be just by yourself. And You would classify this as a traumatic experience? Yes. <laughs> The part, the and then, uh, so the trauma, the, tra the, tr the trauma <laughs> being the pain that you saw and Steve not with seeing other women. That's the trauma. Seeing Steve with other women wrecking my cars and you know further in that. Yeah, of course it's it's traumatic for anyone. Yeah, no, I'm not. Tr yeah. I'm not trying yeah. to say that it's not. I yeah. just wanted to, to make sure I understood what specifically the trauma was. If it was more the vehicle, or if it was, or no. if it was all. I mean, vehicle is vehicle. Vehicle yeah, is flexible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insurable. But but the the thing is that it was my personal vehicle. It, that was another question, and people. I did a live it last is, night. It was my personal okay. vehicle, yeah. and it was given to somebody else, and I was not giving the whole background of the story. Mm -hmm. And there were there is a lot more to come um that was the, the traumatic experiences mm. the the entire interaction the way it was presented to me and the way i learned about it mm -hmm. that was traumatic and very well undeserved for me to experience sure okay um i got whew, got so many questions um <laughs> this <laughs> I've just been uncomfortable asking this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, eventually, I want to get to what your relationship is with the boys, which, you know, um, being that that's their dad. And, you know, Steve has got so much admiration for you. He talked about that in the podcast with us. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Are you more mad at Steve or are you mad at Brooke? I'm, I'm definitely more mad at Steve. Do you have any ill feelings towards Brooke? You know, honestly, you know, well, as <laughs> if you, if you want me to come from a normal human perspective, of course. <laughs> I mean, right. No, yes. I want you to be honest. But yeah, like no, no. I mean, of course. I mean, uh, clearly, she was aware. I mean, I feel like she was somewhat misled, uh, and in regards to how the communication was happening to me, uh, definitely. <laughs> not going to be like oh yeah i'm so sorry you were misled <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i'm not right. that way so yeah no i am so, not going to approve of any of that like i'm sorry bro <laughs> okay so when you see or maybe you haven't seen i've seen some of the hate that's come towards brooke on social media do you think that it is valid that's a great question <laughs> like when you when you see have um, you seen it have you seen the hate for, for brooke I don't, I, I choose not to read a ton of um, feedback. When initially, like a first couple of days I did, I, I don't think it's, I, I don't really think that I want her to experience that. I don't think that she was giving the, the entirely full information mm -hmm. and, um, I, I don't think it's right for her to get the full hate train. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much she gets, nor do I know how much. I'm sure I'm getting quite a bit as well. You know, people are people, you know, the yeah. perception is reality. Yeah. Everybody has a different perception. I do not know what kind of information she had, you know, prior to in, engaging in the relationship. So I... I I don't want to judge her. Right. <laughs> like, I, I don't want her to to get negative feedback. You know, I'm sure she's an amazing human being. You know, she's an amazing mother. And and honestly, I'm it's all new to me 
So I'm yeah, just it's still very fresh. So it's deal. a hard, it's a I'm tough just, question to yes, answer. I, get I am that. just learning how to even deal with that. Initially, yes. I mean, of course, it comes with the anger, and then it's like, okay, let me understand the situation and let me deal with that. Yeah. So yeah. just a, a traditional grief circle. <laughs> sure. So I don't know Brooke well. I do have. I've met her before prior. I think I even talked about that in the podcast with Steven and she actually reached out to me uh, right after the interview that I did with Steven and without um, saying too much because what she confided in me was, was private and I didn't get any permission from her to talk about this on this particular podcast. Uh, we have not had any conversation about you coming on, although I know she knows because of the promotion that I put yeah. out there about it. I will just tell you that I, from my vantage point, I feel like that some of the hatred the awful things that are being said to her are not warranted. And that's not to say that you shouldn't feel as a normal human being and a woman that was stuck in the middle of all of that, feel the things that you're feeling, you know, from all of that. But I think that she also feels some remorse also having been in that situation, understanding what happened to your vehicle and, and how all that thing. So I'm not a, a shrink. I'm not a therapist, but I guess all I'm saying is, is that I, I by no way, shape or form want to come on here and be speaking disparagingly against anybody. Yeah. Well, um, and I appreciate that. You know, that like at the I, end of the day, you know what happened has happened. Well, so that, well, everybody can make their own perception. 100%. 100%. Yeah, we so, all grown up with women, boys, girls, yeah. you know, what happened has happened. You know, everybody can make their own decision about that situation. We'll leave it at that. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. So the relationship with the guys, with the yeah. boys, um, Stephen obviously thinks very highly, <clears throat> excuse me, thinks very highly of you. It's hard for him to see what was going on there. I mean, you listened to that podcast with Stephen, right? Yes, so you course. heard how affectionately he speaks <laughs> yes, about so you. Um, and, and even in the show, you would call him and vent to him about his dad. And he was often on your side and he was often stuck in a really yes. tough position because that's your dad and he has so much admiration for you. So where are you guys at with, with the working relationship and, and how that's affected the relationship with them? Nothing has changed. Like we, we, we don't intermingle. Like my relationship with Steven or the boys are completely separate from my personal. It mm -hmm. does not affect, like I am fully committed and fully loyal to to the boys like yeah and i don't care what anybody says or whatever that is like they are my family mm -hmm. uh steven was always by my side regardless you know on my side regardless of the situation adults will always have a, a weird you know interpersonal relationship but at the end of the day when it comes to you know outside the personal relationship is different that's what's important like business you, those personal relationship with boys like it's completely different it should not be ever affected by my relationship with steve like okay. i will never try to you know drug them into my personal relationship whether it was steve or whoever that is it's mm -hmm. not fair to them mm -hmm. it's not needed and i'm definitely not in a position to do so Okay. No, we, I have a great relationship with, with boys. I'm like, and I hope it will continue that way. I am committed to our business and I'm like, I am extremely excited that I have developed those relationships. You referred to them as family, which I think is very accurate based on how I see the, you know, how you were explained to us from Steven and how I've seen the show yeah. um, in the first five episodes. So because of the conflict with you and Steve, are you able to spend equal amount of time with each other as you were prior to all of this conflict? Absolutely. And there's it does not affect. I know I keep asking that over and you keep <laughs> answering it the same way over and over, but it's so strange to me. I just I like know how it is because I am strange. I am strange. I am coming from a different values and different experiences. So I, I am clearly, I, I have an ability to recognize what are such a unique, values in life and something that doesn't come very often and um you know coming from a different country like not even knowing the language i mean i literally came with hundred dollars in my pocket you know not knowing the language to find people that are you know they are my family i mean yeah, i don't for know sure. how to explain it like yeah. you know it's it's unique and it's unusual and that not everybody can understand that but that's who they are sure Who's the best McBee? Best McBee? 
Yeah. Which ones? Which one? If you could only what class? Of, or clarify what best is. Know. Define best. I don't know. I yes. I don't know. No, there there is no such a thing as best McB. Like they all unique and they have their own. Well, who's your favorite? I mean, I, like like uh, it's personal. like asking what is your favorite song. Like <laughs> I know. What, who's your favorite child, Jill? <laughs> Who is your favorite child? Well, you could answer that, but that would hurt the other two. <laughs> what is your favorite? What is your favorite movie? What is your favorite song? It just depends on like no, right. there is no such thing. They all are. They okay. Have, if you were gonna get left. If it was going to be on you, an island, yep, and <laughs> one McBee, and I don't even mean romantically. Well, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, if, right. but to be around and deal with. I'm sorry, on a guys. Basis. I'm going to have to say it's Cole. 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 Wow, hey. I would have really thought Stephen. No, Cole is such an easy going guy. <laughs> <laughs> on the island, like on the oh again. yeah, okay. So, if you're talking about like a deserted island with nothing, <laughs> you're you're gonna have a good time and he's easy gonna, going. Like, yeah. you know, go fish. Okay, and, no, I know, get it. I see that. Some now. freaking squirrel okay. and eat it. <laughs> you have like, but that's what I'm saying. But if I'm in a business meeting, yeah. and I'm alone in like a freaking business world, yeah, then it's gonna be Steven. Yeah, <laughs> okay. You know, if yeah. I'm in podcast world, like, okay, who am I going to choose to do my next podcast with? Steven. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 I got it's, it's it's, uh, it's all, uh, you know, circumstantial. <laughs> that makes sense. Yep. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get close to wrapping this up. And I've got two um, two questions. Yes. And and Jill might have some more questions too. But, um, I, and I always say that I got one question or two questions. And then the answer to it's that question right. leads to another question. <laughs> I but might end up with a question, but I don't have something just dying oh, and waiting. I can so. always come back. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, well, we, depending on where this thing goes, there's a pretty <laughs> good go chance far. you'll be back. And I would love to have you back. Um, are you in love with Steve? Steve is, um, definite. I mean, it, last few months it was challenging, but, um, he is, he's an, an incredible person. I, I love him to death as my friend, as my partner. Um, I'm still figuring out things after learning a few events after mm -hmm. the um, the show. And it may take time. I, I don't have a definite So the answer, answer is that. you don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, do you think he's in love with you? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. How do you feel about a season two? Uh, after experiencing all of this, I am, and are you I'm, apprehensive I, about it? Terrified? Did you just say terrified? I am. Okay. I am. I, I'm not. I am not sure what to expect. I am. Um, like I'm curious. Like I'm. I'm anxious. Um, you know, I know it's going to be a growing experience. I'm. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, but I definitely so terrified in an exciting way. Both. Both, uh, both. I'm remember, terrified. She's a yes, uh, I'm. I'm excited about what future holds for me, but I'm kind of afraid, um, you know, about some of the uh, outcomes that I may not like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Just because, um, you know, as you learn from season one, that we're on a different level of, you know, our own relationship. So, you know, I feel different about Steve than he feels about me. Mm. So, so there's a little PTSD very, there. So that would, could that, that prevent you from being as free as you were going into the next season not of filming? No. Okay. That, okay. Not necessarily. It, it's, it's, it's probably makes me more aware and maybe less desperate uh, and more understanding of what he's going through. It definitely does not make me more like less free. Okay. It just makes me more aware of his feelings and how he, you know, wants to, you know, live his life. Hmm. Do we have a confirmation that there will be a season two? I, that would be totally up to network. So, and you guys, so mm -hmm. we just hope. We don't know. Like, I guess what I'm asking is no, we don't know that for sure know. there's going to be a season no, two. There's nothing not under know. contract. There's no. no date set to go start filming a new no. season. No. So is no, it all kind of contingent on how season one performs? I, I believe so. Okay. All right. And again, I'm not the main uh, cast member. I, I was fortunate enough to be featured in the, in the, in this TV show as much as I did and, and make a, a very contributing factor, but it's all about the family and about guys and about Steve and his boys. Yeah. All right. Do you have anything else before I ask my very last question? I don't think <laughs> so. All right. Dude. Galena, as a very successful business owner and business operator, what could we be doing better at the Papa Ron podcast? 
<laughs> yeah, I put you. That's like, that came out of left field, didn't right? you? you know, what can we be doing? What uh, would you, if you were to business? I do not get, give a spend. I mean, I take business serious. Why don't I take a look at your business books? And oh, okay. You know. There's nothing in the books. There's nothing monetized there. I mean, we're trying to get this thing to a place just where it's going to be monetized. Just keep exciting. Keep the right guests and yeah. and just keep promoting yourself and just go out there and promote yourself. All right. So you like what we're doing? I love it. Well, thank you. <laughs> hey, I know that we came with some really hard questions and I want you to know that I do have, and I said it earlier, but I really do admire you. Thank you. And and I think that you are somebody that my, I would feel 100% comfortable bringing my daughter into this room and introducing to. And and that that's that says a lot. I hope you know how much that says. And, and <laughs> anybody who knows me knows how much I love my daughter. Um, I have so, as an aspiring entrepreneur, I have so much respect for what you've been able to do. On the business side. And I also, uh, you know, I, I have to walk this fine line because I'm creating a show here. I'm asking tough questions. There's obviously a lot of hype that has come with the show. There's people, I, I have to ask questions that the people want to ask themselves. And I know that that comes with vulnerability. I know that might even come with some pain and difficulty with answering those questions. I don't want you, I just want you to know that that I, I'm sensitive to that. And I, I empathize with what you're feeling and going through. I'm sorry that I had to ask some of those questions, but I hope you understand the reason why I went down that road. But I, uh, I can tell already that you're a person that I can care about and, and hope the best for and would love to have you back in the future uh, if the, the opportunity presents itself. So thank you so much for being so open. And thank you for reaching out to me to come on here because honestly, that's how it happened. I was like, wow, she's really got something to say. Right. And, and then we <laughs> talked on the phone. I'm like, yeah, yep. We're, this is definitely going to happen. So <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate thank that. Thank you so much for having me. As we wrap this up, don't forget, check out this brand new coffee that we released recently over at dirtyduckcoffee.com. It's called Gratitude and Empathy. It's a smooth Brazilian medium roast. It's got the taste of nostalgia. This is a way that you can support the Papa Ron podcast because I do not subscribe to asking for a handout like you will find with many other podcasts. But we got to find creative ways to fund this project as we want it to continue to grow. And this is one small way of doing that. Go over to uh, dirtyduckcoffee.com. Whether you buy this blend or any of their other blends or any of their merch, use promo code PAPA, P-A-P-A. That will save you some money and it will help us out on the way along the way as well. So for Jillian Greg, for Galena, Salt Vakoska. <laughs> Did I say it right? Volkowska? No, 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 I didn't. All right. Volkowska. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Ronnie Phillips. That's episode 47 of the Papa Ron Podcast. You've been listening to the Papa Ron Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, hit subscribe now on the podcast platform. Follow the Papa Ron Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And while you're there, like, comment, and share. Until next time, thanks for listening to the Papa Ron Podcast. Papa Ron Podcast. Papa Ron Podcast.